I'm Rita Chelli in Ottawa. This is CBC Country Canada. I was wound up tighter than a redneck sphincter watching the casual fall. It had been a couple of weeks since my last case and I was flat busted, but old Butchie here wasn't too worried. Stupid brown. I knew I should have gotten blue. Me and Lady Luck, we've got an understanding. And I figured sooner or later she'd toss me a bone and take the monkeys out for a prostate exam. Game, set, and match, baby. Lady Luck keeps odd hours some days. Are you Butch Patterson? What's in it for me if I tell you? Can I come in? I'm not sure I'm man enough to stop you. Just so you know, I don't sleep with my clients unless they let me. I am not here looking for sex. Where do you go when you are looking for sex? Maybe I can meet you there sometime. I'd rather cut out my own pancreas with a broken bottle. I was just about to get really drunk. Can I offer you something? Whatever you're having is fine. I'm having this. I like to drink straight from the bottle. I find it faster. That sounds like a man running from something. You're exactly right. Only it's the opposite. Then what are you running towards, Mr. Patterson? Liver failure, if you believe my doctor. You can call me Butch. That's a nice name. Yeah, I'll tell my mom how you feel. She validates herself on the approval of others. Now what can old Butchie here do for you? That hole was made by a pickaxe. I want you to find out who killed him. I'm willing to pay top dollar. I'm almost all ears, Strawberry. And a few other parts you might be interested in. I need it done quickly. That's a safe bet if you're talking about the other parts. So did this stiff have a name? Harry Coltrane. And were you around when he got stiff? I was on my way to meet him. He was already dead when I got there. The police were everywhere. I panicked and fled. That was last night. That's an expensive watch he's wearing. Not to mention a cameo brooch in tiara. I don't follow you. Cut the charade, Daffodil. Your wedding ring. The stiff ain't wearing one, and my guess is he never was. I can't help but wonder how your husband would feel about you meeting up late at night with another man. Look, Patterson, I didn't come here looking for the third degree. Do you want the case or not? Just so you know, if you want the best, you got to expect to fork over some serious scratch. How much for the best? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. He can't be that much better than me, and I come way cheaper. I'll need 80 bucks up front. The same on the back end and a couple of weeks operating capital. Thirty dollars a day. That's five hundred bucks. You'll have to take your word for that. So where was the body found? All the information is there in that envelope. One more thing. I make it a policy to always know who it is I'm working for. You can just call me Madam X. If I didn't know better, I'd say that sounds made up. I'll call you in a couple of weeks, dollface. Let you know where things stand. John Law must have been watching Columbo and picked up a few pointers. They'd left the crime scene cleaner than a nun's conscience, but old Butchie here wasn't about to put on the pasties and start working for tips. A good part of my job is listening to what my gut tells me, and right now it was talking like a lonely shut-in to an incarcerated phone sex offender. It was also telling me to fill it up with booze. And brother, when my gut starts talking, I damn well start listening. I guess the booze would have to wait. 
You can come on out, Patterson. It's me, Blanche. The voice was right, but who's to say it wasn't Rich Little on a methamphetamine jag looking to make a name for himself as a spree killer? If you're really who you say you are, maybe you wouldn't mind answering a few questions. Why? Didn't Elmer teach you nothing? Who's Elmer? The safety elephant. You know, from school, Elmer the safety elephant. I can see your cigar smoke. You're thinking of Smokey the Bear. Elmer didn't give a damn about fires. If you don't believe it's me, why don't you just give me a test? How old was I when I lost my virginity? You haven't. So what brings you down here, Blanche? You working on a story? Maybe you just follow me around hoping I'll take pity on you and give you a couple of free passes to the Tony Award-winning musical in my pants. I'm looking into the murder of Harry Coltrane. Harry fell in love with a dame with a ring on her finger. My guess is her husband found out and decided it was time to air out old Harry. End of story. You can quote me on that. You may be right about the jealous husband. Harry was a bookie. Strictly small change, but he had dreams of the big times. He started sniffing around Tommy Rubella, looking to move his operation into the big leagues. Harry got cocky. He started to like the nice cars and the rooms with the view. But the view he liked most of all was Debbie Hitler. She and Harry had been stepping out for a couple of weeks. That's why the men in places like this. They figured Tommy would never get wind of it since he runs in a more sophisticated circle. So you figure Tommy caught wind, shimmied up the pole, saw which way the wind was blowing, and decided it was laundry day for old Harry. If that means Tommy found out Harry was sleeping with his wife and had him killed for it, then yes. Well, that's not what it means, but I gotta tell you, that little scenario makes a whole lot more sense. I wouldn't be surprised if Debbie was your client. Good-looking woman if you go for the rough-around-the-edges type. Shoulder-length brown hair? Hate to disappoint you, licorice pants, but she's jet black, baby. Tommy Rubella is not dumb enough to get his own hands dirty. He didn't kill Harry. And the only way I'm going to get at him is if I find out who did. Looks like the cops already went through this place with a fine tooth comb. Did you find anything? Sorry about that. I was looking for my car keys. You don't own a car. I meant thesaurus. Look, I've got to get going. I've got a story to do for tomorrow's edition. Quit looking at my ass, Patterson. After the wad of cash I dropped in here last night, the only question you should be asking me is where does it itch? It's against the law to serve people outside of our posted business hours. Yeah, well, me and the cops, we got an understanding. I do what I want when I want, and I hope like hell they don't find out or I'm going back to jail. That's pretty much the same understanding everybody has with the law. Exactly. You got any coffee on? Yeah, there's a fresh pot just finished. You might want to think about having a cup. You look like something the dog had fun times with after everyone went to bed. While you're at it, I'll have six banana daiquiris. Yeah, you guys got any male escorts? Great, I'm gonna need one right quick. And just so you know, my tastes are pretty peculiar. Yeah, I'm gonna need a big guy who ain't hung up on hygiene. Yeah, that's right. Easy there, slap shot. I'm good for the cash. The dirtier, the better. For a little fantasy of mine, I get real cranked up thinking about some big guy busting into my apartment and having his way with me. Yeah, that's right. 45 Bel Air Avenue. The name's Frank. That'll be 38 dollars. Put it on my tab. You don't have a tab. And I never will if you don't start cooperating. Fine. If you need anything else, I'll be right over there putting a spit coat of shellac on the handle of my new pickaxe. So what's the hot little number like you doing with the pickaxe? More importantly, where'd you get it? 
Well, there's a place around the corner. They're giving out free pickaxes with the purchase of any six feminine hygiene products. It's part of a government initiative to get more women involved in the trades. Liberals. Don't knock it. I'm two packages of mine all away from a pair of steel-toed boots and kissing this dead-end job goodbye. How long's this little promo been going on? Three, four days, maybe. Why? Let's just say old Butch here is starting to feel bloated and crampy. Hey, if you're getting something for head lice or crabs, keep the receipt. I got my eye on a belt sander. What can I do for you, sir? I'm gonna need the name and address of everyone who bought Kotex and Maxi Pads in here in the last four days. This is a convenience store, idiot. We don't keep track of stuff like that. Whoever was behind this whole mess was smart enough not to leave a paper trail. That told me the hit was strictly pro all the way. Are you gonna buy anything? Give me that box of cigars down there. Anything else? Yeah, but uh, hey, these are kind of nice. Thanks for springing for my bail, hot pants. I owe you one. All this for a box of cheap cigars? I didn't steal nothing. The kid at the store screwed up. I think it was his first day on the job. I saw the video from the surveillance tape. The cops have you dead to rights. That's why it was so easy to find you. A lot of them recognized you from that incident at the petting zoo. I thought we had a deal not to talk about that anymore. So, before you got arrested, did you manage to find anything out that's gonna get me closer to pinning Harry's murder on Tommy Rubella? Before, during, and after, baby. Only I didn't realize it till now. Well? Don't sweat it, hot pants. I'll let you know before I dust off my thong and take the midgets out for swimming lessons. Did you find out who killed Harry Coltrane? I don't like to be lied to, Madam X. Or should I say Debbie Hitler? How did you find out? Who wants to know? Me. What's in it for old Butchie here if I tell you? Did you find out who killed Harry Coltrane or not? We both know Tommy did it, but I need some proof. If fine dining and jewels ain't your bag, why'd you get mixed up with Rubella in the first place? I was young and naive. I was no different than a million other small town girls growing up with stars in their eyes and a dream of coming to the big city to become a kinesiologist. I was in my third year of med school and I was strapped for cash. My lab fees were killing me, so I took a job at a topless gas station. I used to look at all the full-service girls and think, never in a million years. But you know how it goes. All those nights in the library cramming for exams while the rest of the girls I worked with were walking around in furs and new coveralls. It started with a few shifts on weekends. And after a while I stopped going to physiology and then chemistry and biology. And then I dropped out altogether. When did Tommy come into the picture? 
A few weeks later, I'd been up all night doing a valve job on a 67 Buick when Tommy pulled up in this chopped out gremlin. It had the works, mag wheels, tinted windows, Playboy bunny mud flaps, and there had to be at least seven plastic Virgin Marys on the dash. Real sweet, you know? I mean, it's a gremlin, right? You don't see too many of those around anymore, and, well, a topless female mechanic can go her whole career without ever getting under the hood of one of those, and I wasn't about to let it go. Anyway, long story short, Tommy and I got to talking while I was draining his oil pan and changing the plugs. One thing led to another, and three weeks later I was walking down the aisle with him. It was the happiest day of my life. Sounds real Hallmarkian. When did things go wrong? About six months after we were married. Tommy was at work, so I figured I'd do a little something nice for him and surprise him. I was going to do a complete filter and fluids job on the gremlin. So I took off my blouse, I popped the hood. The engine was clean as a whistle. New oil filter, full of washer fluid and coolant. Hell, even the brake fluid had been changed. At first I was mad. And then I figured... Two could play at that game. So that's when Harry comes into the picture. 76 Lincoln Continental that hadn't seen a garage in years. Only Tommy found out and killed Harry. Oh, he found out all right, but he's not stupid enough to kill someone himself. There's a guy he uses for that kind of work. Does this guy have a name? He only goes by his code name. Mr. Anonymous, the homicidal killer for hire. And where can I find this guy? All I have is this photo taken at one of Tommy's Tupperware parties. He bought a set of bowls and some microwave-safe freezer containers. He's the one in the powder blue cardigan. I'll see what I can turn up. Hmm. One, one more thing. Can I have some more money? I'm Rita Chelli in Ottawa. This is CBC Country Canada. Sorry about the mess. My cleaning woman works for someone who pays her. Looks like you had yourself quite the party last night. I didn't know what had gone on the night before, but I sure as hell didn't want Blanche to figure me for some pervert. It's not what you think. All this stuff's mine. Sometimes I like to have a few drinks and buy a lot of women's underwear. Well, takes all kinds, I guess. man in the photograph. You recognize him? The one in the blue cardigan. Never seen him before. Why? Because he's the guy that put the new window in Harry Coltrane's head. Does he have a name? The only thing standing between me and knowing this guy's name is finding someone who recognizes him from the photo and can tell me his name. But he's the killer, all right. It's a pretty cool camera you got there. Where'd you get it? I bought it so I could record Tommy and the people he associates with. You know what they say, picture's worth a thousand words. It's worth a thousand words and an extra 80 bucks for old Butchie here. Come on. I don't follow you. You will, baby. Because when it comes to petty theft maxi pads and dressing up in women's clothing, old Butchie wrote the book.
16 bucks. Keep the change. And here's your free pickaxe. So, uh, you from around here, ma'am? I just moved into the Broken Arms Apartments, room 236, the south end of the building overlooking the parking lot. How about a nice floral wreath to hang on your front door? Sure. That's Mr. Blue Cardigan, all right. And I got a pretty good idea where we can find him. Broken Arms Apartment, room 236, south side of the building overlooking the parking lot. One with the wreath on the door. Well, that's not what I was thinking. That makes a whole lot more sense. Come on. Okay, so here's the plan. I'll knock on the door and when Mr. Blue Cardigan answers, that's his real name. We'll tell him we're from the Golden Palace Peep Show, and as part of a new promotion, we're going around giving free live sex shows. Kind of a hurry here, so you might want to remove your blouse now. Get out of my way, Patterson. Damn it. Tommy must have gotten to him first. Put it in park, hot pants. Looks like Mr. Tupperware here punched his own ticket. He left a note. It's impossible. You can't beat yourself to death with a pickaxe. Hey, normally I'd agree with you. There's no getting around that note. It doesn't explain anything. Listen, the way I figure it, Tommy just forged that note to make it look like a suicide. 